Friends, in response to the good news of God's love, we are called to seek God first, then to dedicate our lives in service and love to Jesus Christ. If you would like to speak to someone following about your life of faith or joining Second Presbyterian Church, following this service, I would be happy to meet with you at the front of the sanctuary. Now, please stand and let us affirm our faith as found in your bulletin. Friends, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather this first day of the week to seek you first and offer our worship to you. We lift up our voices to you in song, join our hearts together in confession. Offer our talents and treasures to serve your Son, and open our minds and hearts for the study and proclamation of your word. Hear us now as we bow our heads to pray. In this summer season, the glory of your creation touches our soul. Whether it's the beauty of a warm evening, a glorious sunset, the sights and sounds of a rolling thunderstorm, or the gentle beauty of a walk through a flower garden. Our spirits are mindful of you and your glory. We are grateful for these gifts and the way you bring peace to our soul. But we also find ourselves once again trying to make sense of a world that seems out of control, whether it's unrest in Turkey, South Sudan, or the Middle East, another unbelievable tragic event in France, or the upcoming political conventions and important election this fall, we wonder if it's true that nothing can separate us from you and your love and care. We are mindful of all who suffer from these events or live in fear of what may be ahead. We are grateful for all who offer care and security both here and throughout the world. We especially remember our military, police, first responders, and diplomats who work to bring security, care, and peace to a world that seems torn asunder. We also remember this day those in our families, church, and larger community that are facing the shock and numbness that comes from the grief and pain of loss, the anxiety producing news of a difficult diagnosis, or the strain upon a family that is facing divorce or difficult financial times. We pray as well for our own concerns and the challenges we face each day as we seek to live in your ways and serve your world. Grant us your wisdom and guide our service that we may live in the confidence of your spirit. Even in our fears and doubts, 
We offer our prayers for friends and strangers who are ill and suffering and need to know your love. We pray as well for those among us who are oppressed by hardship, social injustice, and sorrow. Help us to encourage one another in your gracious and holy name. In this anxious and scary time, help us to proclaim to a frightened and hurting world that truly nothing can separate us from your love. Teach us to live each day with the devotion and humility found in the prayer Jesus taught to his disciples as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> 